Hello there, everybody. David from Flash by V Cyclonaut. Got the next exhaust up in line for testing on my 24 MT09. And it's the, I say Akrapovic, maybe you say Akrapovic, whatever you say. We all know what it is. Uh, and this is an ever popular exhaust on any platform that I tune on. And there, there's good reason. They're always a little bit more expensive, but they do have some features that, uh, in general, that the other exhaust manufacturers don't. Uh, one, they come with full instruction booklets. And, you know, I mean, you know, not worth that much money, but it is nice that we ha they have really good instructions with uh, diagrams and such. This is the first one for the 24. It's designed uh, for the 24, and this one will work on European models. It has two O2 bungs on it. One, two, that will accept both narrow band and wide band, which is kind of nice because um, I could leave the 24 in with the O2 sensor and also put my wide band in it at the same time. Uh, the header came pre-put together, but it's not, you know, on together that much, but it's nice I, that these are welded on and not spring held on. It's a little easier of an install sometimes getting those springs up there uh, to place on them. It can be difficult. As always with Akrapovic, the welds look really nice. Can't see it in the camera, but there's they're clean. The canister is made of carbon fiber and has a removable DB killer that I'll test both with in it and out. And a really cool carbon fiber exhaust bracket. Uh, in my experience, the DB killer for Acropovic is very efficient. Usually only costs a horsepower, a horsepower and a half on the dyno. Um, the last time when I tested on a 21, it did make it quieter at idle, but it didn't really quiet it down uh, at full throttle. So I'll test it again, get both sound readings and power readings with it both in and out. Um, and exa whole exhaust weighed about nine pounds, not too bad. Uh, because of the length of the can, I expect this to be uh, a moderately loud exhaust. So I get that question a lot on exhaust, uh, which one sounds the best. Best is a definitely, uh, everybody has a little bit different opinion. On a, uh, a CP3 motor, there's really never an exhaust that sounds bad, at least I've never heard one that sounds bad. Um, and le volume loudness is, is physics. It's always determined by the size of the can. So it's got, um, it's got some some canister to it so that should keep the quietness down a bit and it's got a nice long mid pipe sometimes that helps sometimes it doesn't uh there's definitely a minimum length needed for for mid pipes uh for them to work with certain certain mics uh but as long as you generally have the little, enough length adding additional length usually doesn't give you anything so uh i'll get this bolted up and if anything weird comes up with bolting up, I'll be sure to mention it, but I doubt there will be. And uh, we'll get some sound clips, some dyno runs, and some numbers, and get this whole thing mapped out. Uh, so stay tuned. In the process of putting on the Acropovic exhaust, I have both top mount, radiator mount bolts removed. I got the radiator off of the little metal bracket. I got the metal bracket loose. I put the header on and installed that. So I got a little bit of play, nothing crazy, but just enough. Uh, and now I'm gonna lubricate these a little bit and push the mid pipe on it. So far, so good. All right, after I put the header on, I put the mid pipe on, put the springs on it. It's loosely in its mount right, right there. And then I did what followed the instructions for putting the canister mount on right there. I pulled out the DB killer out of the pipe, which is super easy, it just was a, a bolt right there and then I just tapped it from the backside with a piece of wood and it came right out uh, so put the canister on finish this install so it is all on so like always I tightened from the back of the bike forward after having everything mounted loose got my wideband for data logging doing my street tuning first got the bracket for the radio back on I just gotta bolt up the two top radiator mounts and we'll be good to go so I'll get you some uh, sound clips and a dyno and at idle and uh, we'll get some testing results with it expecting good things as acropovic always makes <laughs>
sitting on top of my 24 MT-09 again. Uh, just finishing up my dyno testing on it. Uh, you can see I got uh, 815 miles on it. Uh, coolant's top hot because it was on the dyno and I just shut it off. It's not running. But um, did a little bit more on street testing than I would normally. Uh, about 100 miles, a little bit over 100 miles. The reason for that is because this is the first exhaust uh, that I've tested on the new 24M209. It was made specifically for the 24 and not just the 21 through 23. And the difference is, is it has two O2 bung sensor bungs in it. And so that allowed me to hook up the stock O2 sensor and still data log it and ride it. So normally I can't do that. We could do it on the dyno because we could vacuum it out of the back of the exhaust. But the O2 sensor is normally not doing anything at full throttle anyway on almost every bike I've ever tested, bar a couple. On the MT-09, it's turned, not, I don't know if it's actually turned off, but it's not affecting the fueling when we're, when we're doing dyno runs. But when I'm riding down the road, it really did. And what I was able to see that what, where I would normally target air fuel ratios, to be clear, I don't tune to an air fuel ratio. Uh, I have a target range, but I'm really tuning to what it feels like, that I'm in the proper range that I want to be in, and that the on and off throttle response feels like I want it, the smoothness of the motor, all the stuff that if you've ridden one of my tuned bikes that you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. So what I found was with the O2 sensor active, it, I don't want to say ruined it, but it certainly affected it in a bad way. And it was basically a full whole number leaner than I would like it. So let's say if I'm targeting mid 13s at smaller throttle openings, mid 13s for an air fuel ratio, it would be in the mid 14s. And the bike feels very different at that air fuel ratio. The on and off throttle's not as smooth, the bike's just not as smooth, and it doesn't have the, the linear response to when I turn the throttle. I'm looking for as I turn the throttle, that I get response back for the more I turn it, not where you turn it and nothing happens. So if you look, you see I'm in power mode two, and I'm finding that to be my favorite power mode, how I've set up my flash. So if you're familiar with my Gen 1 and Gen 2 uh, FCO9 flashes, let me turn it off so the fan stops running. If you're familiar with them, then you know uh, I would give you an option for a snappy A mode versus a smooth A mode. And so basically power mode one, is like my snappy A mode used to be on my Gen 1 flash or Gen 2 flash. And then power mode two is like my smooth A mode. And so I, I like it that way. So the, the power mode one is a little too aggressive for some situations, but I still have power mode two. And then I even have power mode three, which is a very linear smooth throttle to go to. So uh, this is how I like my own bike set up. It seems to be really popular with my customers. So and this way you have three modes that make full power at full throttle that all have different feelings and they're useful in different situations. The tighter the road, the more technical the road, the more control you need with your right wrist, the more you're gonna go to power mode two or in power mode three. Cruising around town on the highway, road trips, wanna rip wheelies, act a fool, power mode one is, your, is where you wanna be. So uh, thanks guys, uh, got some numbers for you. I really enjoyed tuning with the Akropovic, as always, tuned clean. Uh, bike is super smooth on the road. Minimal decel pops. As you clear 6,000, it just has like a really sweet sounding gurgle. No real pops. You can hear it on the dyno runs. You'll hear it kind of gurgle, but no real pops or bangs. So uh, as always, quality stuff from Akropovic. And I like that they made this can a little short. It, you know, I thought on the one for the 21 to 23, the can always looked a little too long and kind of just out of place. I think this looks a lot cleaner. So if you like the old school on the side of the bike exhaust, very good choice. Uh, yeah, man, way to go, Akropovic. And uh, thanks for watching my videos. And uh, take it easy, guys. So let's take a look at some dyno runs. So this is what my 24 MT-09 did stock on my dyno. And this is what we get if uh, we bolt up the Akropovic exhaust and don't do any ECU tuning. So just by bolting up the exhaust, you can see we gained about four horsepower, one and a half foot pounds of torque. We don't have any areas that are below the stock line, but obviously with the stock ECU, we still have that fall off on top and it doesn't just keep pulling like it should. So here's what the we look like when we have the Acropovic exhaust on our 24MT09 with the DB Killer out and my flash. See, it pulls real nice up to the top now. So then I put the DB killer in and did a couple more pulls and uh, yeah, it actually made a little bit more power. I mean, you know, 
if you look at the runs, they're pretty much identical, but definitely didn't lose power and actually gave me two num two runs back to back, really close to 116 and a half horsepower with a little bit better torque number. So eh, kind of crazy, but keep them DB killers in. And as with the 21 through 23, really didn't make huge difference in sound levels. Uh, at idle, it dropped it a little bit. On the run, it still popped over 130. Uh, when riding it, it, it was a little mellower. So I really don't see any reason that you would uh, run with it out unless you just like to make noise, which, hey, all, all the power to you. So let's see what you're leaving on the table if you're one of those people that's just going to bolt the exhaust on and not get an ECU flash. You would actually leave in five horsepower, two and a half foot pounds of torque, and these are the only things that I can quantify. Not only that, you're getting a second gear that will now literally put you on your ass if you turn traction control and wheelie control off or lift control. Uh, way smoother, better throttle response, just smoother overall running, just a much more fun bike to ride. So spend the $300, get this thing running the way it should. And if we compare where we started with the stock bike to where we are now, up, almost nine horsepower and almost four foot pounds of torque, just much more fun. Powerful bike to ride. And let's have a little fun and look at the gains at the old, close to the old red line. You can see we gained almost 15 horsepower or 15 horsepower uh, with that extended red line. Just really makes the bike much quicker on the top end. And if we compare it directly to the SC project that I already tested, we'll call it a wash on the peak number. And you can see the Akrapovic has better area under the curve with uh, better performance down low. And you, you can feel that on the road a little bit, that low RPMs, that, uh, a little fluffy on the SC, uh, cleaned up really nice with the Akrapovic. And Akrapovic has a little bit of advantage from six to nine grams. So next step is I have exhausts from Kelpie, Tos, Black Widow, Leo Vince, and Yoshimura are all headed towards me. But none of them have gotten here yet, so be a couple days, but we will continue our testing and development on the 24 MT-09. In the meantime, I'll just enjoy some miles on it, and uh, thanks guys for watching. Appreciate y'all.